Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Escheba, and I uh, want to tell you a little bit about quantum numbers and Hund's rule in relationship to uh, atomic orbitals. So this is just to reorient you. This is our orbital energy diagram. And uh, so energy on this axis here and various uh, orbitals. This is the first shell, second shell, and so forth. And I've, uh, I've created, uh, just for the sake of argument here, an excited state electron configuration, uh, which would be described this way. In the 1s orbital, there's one electron. There it is. In the 2s orbital, there's also an electron. It's spin down. And in the 2p electron uh, uh, orbital, there's, a, there's another, uh, another electron. And uh, I'm using this because I want to talk about uh, the, 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 the four quantum numbers that are in each, um, that, that characterize every single electron on a given atom. So let me just march through this. Um, I'm abbreviating Q number there, so that's the quantum numbers. So one quantum number is called m sub s. It's called the spin quantum number. And um, we've, we've seen that electrons have spins. Uh, we've talked about how they can be spin up or spin down. Turns out the spin up version gets a quantum number of plus one half, m s equals one half, and uh, the spin down version gets a quantum number of minus a half. Let's see, uh, going on, uh, there's also a shape quantum number. That's given by the letter L, and uh, that's fairly straightforward, too. The s orbitals, all s orbitals, which are the round guys, have L equals 0. And uh, all p orbitals have uh, an L value of 1, and d orbitals have an L value of 2. And uh, turns out that the first shell uh, has only L equals one, uh, 0. It doesn't, that means it doesn't have any p orbitals or d orbitals. The second shell gets to have L equals 0 and 1, which means it has s orbitals and p orbitals. And the third shell has L equals 0, 1, and 2, which means it has all three. And we can keep on going up um, there. Uh, another um, quantum number is called the principal quantum number. It's given the letter N. Um, it affects primarily the size of orbitals and also the energy of those orbitals, more or less. Um, and uh, this is very simple. The first shell has n equals 1, second shell has n equals 2, and it's bigger. And the second shell, generally, the orbitals have higher energy. And the third shell has n equals 3. They're even bigger and even higher in energy, and so on. So uh, the last one is called the orientation quantum number. We're going to call it the orientation quantum number. It's called, uh, the letter is M subscript L. Here's the deal. M sub L runs, it can take on values starting at minus L and going all the way up to plus L. And it tells us the orientation of the orbital if that is relevant. So let me give you an example. An s orbital, remember s orbitals have l equals 0. That means the m sub l quantum number can only run, can only be 0. And uh, that's why there's only one s orbital in each shell, because um, that, that's just what l dictates. m sub l can only be 0. p orbitals, remember, have, have an l value of 1. So that means m sub l could be minus 1, 0, and 1 as possibilities. And that is why there are three p orbitals in shell, starting shell 2, and then shell 3, and so forth, because I'm, once again, referring back to the, to the, to the L con number. Uh, d orbitals can have, because d orbitals have L equals 2, that means m sub L can go from minus 2, minus 1, 0, and 2. That means there's 5, so that's why there are 5 d orbitals and... Um, Again, because of these other restrictions, the first set of d orbitals occurs in uh, shell, shell 3. Now, let's see if we can uh, uh, do some assignments here. I'm looking at this electron here. It has, it's in the first shell. Uh, okay, that means n is 1. It has uh, uh, the, uh, the shape quantum number of 0 because it's an s orbital. And m sub l can only be 0, so... Uh, because of the restriction we talked about before, and I can see that it's spin up, so it m sub s must be plus a half. How about this one? 
this electron, uh, it's up here. So if you want, you can pause the video and, and take, a, take a stab at it. Okay, I'm saying that this uh, is in the second shell. So it must have uh, an n value of, uh, of 2. And uh, let's just go on to the rest of my answer there. It's an s orbital. So um, once again, l is 0. M sub L can only be zero for s orbitals. And um, I'm looking at it now, and it's spin down, pointing down, so it's M sub S. Its spin quantum number must be minus a half. How about this one here? And if you want to pause and uh, have a look at it and take a shot at it. All right, I'm saying here we are still in the second shell, so that means N is two. It's a P orbital, so now I know that L is one. Now, the M sub L, uh, you know, it's a bit, uh, it depends on how you count it, but I normally count, you know, if I know that M sub L can run from minus 1 to 0 to 1 for a P orbital, I could say that's the minus 1, that's the 0, and that's the plus 1. So I'm going to say that the M sub L is 0 for that orbital. And I see that it's spin up, so M sub S is uh, plus a half again. Now, there's, a, there's also this thing called Hun, Hun's rule. When there is this thing called subshell degeneracy, what we do is we avoid pairing up and we align spins. Let me explain that. So uh, this is a whole shell. Degeneracy means same energy. And I can see that this s orbital does not have the same energy as those p orbitals. But subshell means a part of a shell. And yeah, it's pretty obvious that all those three p orbitals have the same energy. So there is definitely subshell degeneracy going on there. And uh, in this case, I need to put two electrons in it. So Huns rule says when there is subshell degeneracy, avoid pairing up, that is, don't spin pair, and also align the spins. So in other words, uh, uh, I, I put them here and here. So uh, their spins can be aligned, and they're in separate orbitals. So Hun says this is the better, that is to say, the lower energy state. It's probably the ground state uh, for this for this atom. Um, Hun would say this is bad. This is a higher energy state. There's nothing illegal about it. It doesn't violate the Pauli exclusion principle because they're they're paired up. But since uh, Hun really wanted us to split them up into separate orbitals, that is to say, avoid pairing and align spins. Uh, we would say this must be a higher energy or an excited state. And uh, that's what I want to say.